Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Nelson New Zealand travel guide. If you're new here, my partner and I moved to New Zealand over a year ago and we've spent the last seven months in Nelson. So I'm gonna give you my best tips for coming to the region, things to do, what to see, where to stay, how to get around. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we're going to cover is where to stay. So I'm gonna recommend the Tahuna Nui Beach area as being my favorite spot to stay in in Nelson. This is outside of the city center, but it's only about a five to 10 minute drive, depending on where you're going to stay. Being walkable to the beach, being close to a lot of really amazing restaurants and bars is really what makes this such a special place. During the summer months, there is a bus that typically goes from different parts of Nelson and brings you right to Tahuna Nui. There's a wide range of accommodation options in Tahuna Nui. There is a holiday park, so if you're in a camper van, you can stay there. If you have a tent or if you want to rent out one of the little motel style cabins, of course, there are motels and hotels all down the main strip of Rocks Road and their surrounding area. There's also freedom camping spots in the Tahuna Nui Reserve area, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. The second area that I would recommend staying in in Nelson is the city center. There are lots of accommodations to choose from, and you can be very walkable to tons of bars, shopping, restaurants, be right in the heart of the action. It's also a pretty short bus ride out to the beach if you wanted to come and check that out. There are more options for accommodations in the city center, including backpackers. So if you're on a budget, this might be the best option. Let's talk about getting around. So if you have a car, that's great. It's gonna be perfect for quick trips in and out of the city or for day trips that are a little bit further away. If you don't have a vehicle, there are different ways to get around around, including the bus system. You need to get a B card if you don't want to pay cash fares. This is super easy to get. I will post a link down in the description if you want to research that more. You can also take taxis, but Nelson has Uber as well. Nelson is also very walkable and has a ton of bike lanes. So if you wanted to rent a bike or bring your own bicycle, you can easily get around the city center and the surrounding region on biking and walking pathways. Things to do. So we're going to start with free slash cheap things to do and then and move into some less budget friendly options. Tahuna Nui Beach, Tahuna Nui Reserve, like I mentioned earlier, is a really great spot to have your base to actually stay, but it's also a great spot to visit. If you wanna go and spend a beach day, it's a really easy way to spend a cheap or free day, pack a lunch and head down to the beach and just relax, go for a swim if you want to. You could go for a paddleboard, a kayak. There is actually a place to rent that stuff at the beach. And this entire area has so many facilities. It has washrooms, showers, there is a beach cafe. There's even a fun park that has things like mini golf, which I think is around $8. You can do bumper boats, you can do a water slide, go-karts. There are walking and biking pathways all throughout. This is such an amazing spot. There's even a little zoo called Natureland Park for $15 per person. There's a beach volleyball area. There are tennis courts. I mean, you name it, this area really has it. So I want to reiterate that I think Tahuna Nui is the best place to stay in Nelson if you're coming during the hot weather months. Another amazing free thing to do in the area are the Queen's Gardens and the Souter Art Gallery. The gardens are quite small, but very beautiful to wander around. It's a great spot to bring a book, take a seat and have a read. You could also come to the Souter Art Gallery Cafe and just have a nice coffee while you sit and look out at the beautiful gardens in the background. Another really fantastic free garden to walk around is the Miyatsu or Mayatsu Japanese Garden. This is a beautiful spot to just go for a stroll. Again, you could bring a book or just go for a few photo ops. They have washrooms here. They have a parking lot. This is also really close to one of the other spots, which I'm going to be talking about, but this is so beautiful. I really do love Japanese gardens. If you come in the spring or the fall or even the summer, you're going to see it at its best. You're going to see all these beautiful water lilies. There are so many places to sit back, relax, kick your feet up and just enjoy a calm, quiet setting. Next on this list is Founders Heritage Park. This isn't free to do, but it's a $11 New Zealand dollars per adult. And it's a really cute outdoor museum with different old style buildings that you can go in and explore. They even have a hop and beer museum, a little cafe, very easy to spend a few hours here just exploring. This venue also hosts a lot of events. So if you're here during the summer, they have food truck Fridays where you can go in for free and actually just wander around, go and grab a bite at the cafe and a beer. They have so many amazing live music bands. I really love this area. I think it's really cute, 
really quaint and well worth a visit. The Provincial Museum is another great way to spend a morning or afternoon. It is free entry for residents of the Nelson Tasman region. If you are a visitor, it's $7 per adult, New Zealand dollars. So I think that's really great value. There's a lot of local history and artifacts, memorabilia from the very first rugby match ever played in New Zealand, which was in Nelson, super cool. There's a lot of history about growing things in the region like hops or fruit, maritime history. I highly recommend checking this place out on a day that's maybe a little bit rainy. I personally really enjoyed it. Another free thing you can do is check out Pix Peanut Butter. This is one of the most popular tourist spots in Nelson, a very famous New Zealand peanut butter maker. You can go and do the tour for free. Just make sure that you book in advance. You get to see their entire facility, read through the history of the peanut butter company itself, make your own peanut butter, try it at the end. And there's lots of really cute things that you can buy as souvenirs from here that are relatively inexpensive as well. One thing to note about Pix is that they're not open on the weekend, so you're gonna have to check this place out during the week, during business hours. Another free thing that you can do, which you can do in every city, is to just wander around the downtown area. You can check out the Christchurch Cathedral and the surrounding gardens. You can go through all of the little shops, the bakeries, check out a restaurant for lunch if you wanna do that. There's a farmer's market in the downtown area every Saturday morning and Sunday morning. There is a flea market. There's also a farmer's market on Wednesday. That one's quite a bit smaller, but if you're in the region during the week, at least you do have an option to check that out. If you're going to be wandering around downtown and you're feeling a little bit thirsty, I can highly recommend the free house for some boutique craft beer beverages, as well as Two Thumb Brewing. They have such a cute little tap room. Highly recommend checking them out. Another great free thing to do in Nelson is to check out where the very first rugby match was played before heading up to the center of New Zealand. This isn't technically, I think the center of New Zealand, but it was used as a central survey point back in like the 1800s. It's still really well worth it to get up there. The views at the top of Nelson city below are so beautiful. It takes about 30 minutes, I wanna say to get to the top. And there is a plaque up there that you can check out and a little area where you can take a seat and just take in the incredible views of the water and the surrounding city. I would say that this is actually a must do in Nelson if you have the time and probably a really amazing spot to watch the sunset. So now let's jump into non-budget things to do in the area. First up is the Nelson Classic Car Museum. This is a private collection of over 150 classic cars. If you're into cars like I am, this is such an amazing place to go and spend an afternoon. It's 19 New Zealand dollars per person. I spent about three hours here. They have two really large buildings and they have a lot of extremely unique vehicles, so definitely worth it. Next is the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary. This is a bird sanctuary that is completely fenced in. Entry is 19 New Zealand dollars per person, but you can save a bit if you're a local. It is 11 New Zealand dollars per person if you live in the Nelson Tasman region. You can take a private walking tour or you can walk the tracks yourself. There are so many walking tracks in this place. There's even a track that takes like an entire day to do, like seven to eight hours return. I was there just a couple days ago and I did about a three hour return hike. I saw so many birds, including Tui, the bellbird, Piwakawaka, which is the New Zealand fantail, my favorite bird. There's also so many beautiful native trees and native forests in this area. It would be very easy to spend an entire day here, especially if you're really into birds, if you're a bird person and you enjoy bird watching. I can definitely see spending like a full day exploring this park. Next on the list is the Cable Bay Adventure Park. This is just outside of Nelson. It's about a 25 minute drive. You can take the Skywire ride, which is 110 New Zealand dollars per person. It is a bit pricey, but it was really quite fun. I don't know if I would do it again, but I'm really glad that we got to do it. You sit in this chair system, which fits four people and then race down into the valley below. I just thought there'd be a bit like better views up there, but there's there is a little cabin around the corner that you can walk around and see the bay out in the distance. If you don't wanna do the Skywire, you can bring your mountain bike or rent one there. You can also play paintball here. So there's a lot of different activities you can do for people who like a bit of adrenaline. I wouldn't call this a must do, but I would say if you have it in the budget, definitely check it out. If not, you can just drive out to Cable Bay, grabbing an ice cream at the local shop there, and then continuing on to 
the rock beach. There is a hike that you can do there as well, which I'm gonna talk about later. Before we move on to day trips, I wanted to highlight a few craft breweries and restaurants that we have found to be really quite outstanding here. First on the list is Eddie Line. You can see I am wearing their shirt. So obviously I am a fan. They have two different locations in the Nelson area. One is a pizzeria and is more family friendly. The other one is their actual brewery and that is definitely more for the craft beer aficionado. They have so many beers on top, a really cute little patio. It is in an industrial area, but if you like craft breweries, you're probably used to that. Sprig and Fern is another brewery that you can experience. Although you can't actually go to the brewery itself, there are a lot of taverns in the area. The one that I would recommend the most is Sprig and Fern in Tahuna Nui because it is pretty much right across from the beach. Hop Federation is another great brewery, although it is just outside of the Nelson area. They are attached to the Rowaka Hotel, which is another amazing spot to explore. They have so many incredible live music shows there. Their restaurant is absolutely stunning. And then you can grab a fresh beer either off of their taps or off of Hop Federation's next door. This is honestly such a cool spot to check out. For restaurants, I wanted to give special mention to Baba Gatto Italian Restaurant. We went there very recently and it was so delicious, authentic, and fresh. Hawker House is another fantastic restaurant to check out right in the heart of the city center. And the Boat Shed, which is right along the water on Rocks Road, looking out into the mountains. Wow, the food was incredible here. The service was amazing. And the building itself is just absolutely stunning. Highly recommend it. So moving on to day trips, all of these spots I'm going to mention are within about an hour's drive. First on the list is Abel Tasman. I think this goes without mentioning, this is one of the most popular areas to check out in this region and it is well worth the drive. You can hike, you can kayak, you can cruise. A lot of the cruises and shuttles leave from Kaiteri Tiri, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Spend an afternoon if you just wanna go for a little taste of it, or you can do the Great Walk, which is super popular. There's also luxury lodges along the track. If you wanted to splurge and spend some real money, you could definitely do this. For me, I just like going up there for a day hike. You could hike probably four or five hours into this see some beautiful golden sand beaches, go for a swim and just relax. If you're going to do this drive, I wanted to give you some highlights to check out along the way. Rabbit Island, this is a beautiful beach, so long and just absolutely fantastic, honestly. There are picnic spots here, there are barbecue spots. So if you wanted to bring a picnic lunch and actually cook out there, you could definitely do that. After Rabbit Island, I would go and check out the Mapua Wharf area. There's another brewery here called Golden Bear, which is just incredible. There are various restaurants here. There are ice cream spots. There are lots of little shops, even just going and looking at the wharf and the surrounding mountains and everything. It's so beautiful. Highly recommend checking out Mapua. It's actually one of my favorite spots in New Zealand. Another great place to stop at along the way up to Abel Tasman is Toad Hall in Motueka. They also have a brewery here called Townsend and a gorgeous like market slash restaurant. So this is a great spot to stop for lunch or you can pop in and just grab a few things along your way. Next is Kaiteri Tiri. Like I mentioned before, this is one of the most famous beaches in New Zealand. It's famous for its beautiful golden sand and just the rocks in the surrounding bay are so majestic and beautiful. And again, this is where a lot of the boats leave from. They have a very large parking lot, but it does get extremely busy. So if you're gonna be coming here, make sure you get there early to get a spot. There is a little cafe that looks quite amazing. Next along your journey up to Abel Tasman, I would take a stop at Split Apple Rock. This is about a 15 minute trek down to the beach. It is downhill the whole way. So just be prepared on the way back up. It's gonna be a bit of a slog, especially if it's really hot and humid. Once you get down to the beach, if you're gonna be there down at low tide, there are a lot of different caves and rocks to explore. It's just so beautiful down here. It can get a little bit crowded, especially at high tide. So again, if you can go a little earlier or avoid going on the weekends, I would highly recommend recommend that. If you're going to take a cruise from Kaiteri Terry, most of them do stop at Split Apple Rock, so don't feel like you need to do this hike as well if you're going to be going there on a cruise. The next day trip is to Nelson Lakes National Park. There are a few incredible day hikes you can do here. There are huts on these hikes as well if you wanted to stay in a hut overnight. It's one of the less crowded parks in New Zealand, I think, 
So if that's something on your bucket list, definitely check it out. A lot of people bring their boats here to go on the lake, Lake Rotoiti. You can go swimming here, although watch out for the freshwater eels. They look a little menacing, honestly. There are a ton of sandflies here and I would definitely recommend bringing bug spray. You find out the hard way if you don't do this, that they are just everywhere, especially down at the lake. And you have to stop at the jetty at Lake Rotoiti because that is one of the most famous shots in New Zealand. Another day trip that you can do from Nelson, this is a little bit closer. And this is what I mentioned earlier, which is Cable Bay. So if you continue past the Cable Bay Adventure Park and go all the way down to the end of the road, you're gonna get to this very beautiful rock beach. You can spend the day just relaxing there, or there is a hike that you can do that is right to the left of this beach. It's about 30 minutes up to the top, but it is very, very steep. So you will definitely get a sweat on. And it's also through farmland. So you will be passing sheep and cows and a lot of poop. But if you have the right boots and you don't mind going through that, the views at the top are absolutely incredible of the surrounding bay and area. I mean, it's just so beautiful down there. I wanted to give a quick shout out to a few spots that are not necessarily day trips. They're under three hours away from Nelson. So you could go and spend a night there, but if you are coming here in the summer, you have more daylight hours and you don't mind doing a longer drive, you could go and check out areas like the French Pass, Takaka Hill and the Caves, Fetariki Beach and Cape Farewell, or the Marlboro Sounds for amazing wine. To wrap this video up, I have to say that Nelson has been such an incredible place to live in and an even better place to be a tourist and travel. Nelson is one of the sunniest cities and regions in all of New Zealand. So if you like the sun, this is a great spot to come and check out. We are surrounded by three different national parks all within about an hour's drive, which is just amazing for those of you who love the outdoors. Nelson is absolutely a perfect launching spot for any type of adventure. And of course is well known for its incredible restaurants restaurants, beaches, and scenery. And you get all of this with kind of a small town feel with still having all of the regular amenities that a larger city would have. So I hope this guide helps you plan your trip to the Nelson Tasman region. If you're from this area or you've been here and you have any other places that you would like to recommend, please leave a comment down below and I will see you guys really soon in the next video. Bye.